Oh, yes, yes. They have the audacity to go after anything. The Seven. Dragons. Gods. No ancient artifact that relates can escape their greedy ambitions. Still, this time is different. Who do they think they are going after the Abyss Order's treasures? Oh, Traveler, it's you. Huh? Ganyu, what are you doing here with Lan? Do you have a commission you need to post? Hello. We were just discussing the treasure hoarders. Yes. We were just saying how even the audacious treasure hoarders should know better than to mess with the Abyss. It's just too evil. But we recently received intel from the Ministry of Civil Affairs that two big-time treasure hoarders in Liyue and Mondstadt are planning some big joint operation. Two big-time treasure hoarders? Yes. They're known as Big Sis of the South and Raptor of the North. Oh, Raptor! Paimon remembers he tried to run away from Amber and Mondstadt. But who is Big Sis of the South? You are correct. She's the head of the treasure hoarders in Liyue. As I understand it, the treasure hoarders all call her boss. Some say that the God of Thieves even bestowed a gift upon her for her exploits, making her big sis of the gods. But that's probably just a wild rumor. Anyway, the treasure hoarders discovered some previously unexplored ruins that the Abyss Order has been secretly guarding in the shadows. Despite how dangerous that makes it, all the treasure hoarders can think about is what kinds of treasure could be inside. They have already devised a plan. They will send out a decoy to divert the Abyss Order's forces away from the ruins, then send an expert thief inside to steal the treasure. To this end, Big Sis and Raptor have reportedly recruited a certain Grand Thief from Fontaine. Grand Thief? That's quite an impressive sounding title. Oh, indeed. He is an extraordinary individual. The Grand Thief is highly respected in the Treasure Hoarders, in the same way that we adventurers look up to great adventurers. Ah, so you're familiar with the author of the Tavat Travel Guide, then. Correct. The Grand Thief is someone as renowned as her. So, despite being relative big-timers in Liu and Mondstadt, Big Sis and Raptor had to put in a lot of work to convince a thief of his status to come and personally oversee this operation. With the major changes in Liyue recently, the Ministry of Civil Affairs and the Millilith already have their hands full. They don't have any time to investigate rumors about treasure hoarder activity. But anything related to the Abyss makes me feel like there is some unknown danger lurking beneath the surface. So I decided to come to the Adventurer's Guild to post a commission. Mm-hmm. Leave this commission to us! Oh, thank you so much. Good to see this in the hands of a reliable guild member. Well then, good luck. The guild will take care of the details of this commission. There's like a treasure under here. They must have done these ruins. Let's look deeper inside. I'm sure hope Spidey's information is reliable. There aren't any guns here. What's up, the plan to draw me a bit sort of really quick. Is he praying to something? <gasps> That's... Why is the Statue of the Seven hanging upside down? And the statue's hands... 
Paimon remembers, they're normally holding an orb, right? But... This statue is holding... What is that? Uh... Paimon has a really bad feeling about this. And... The Grand Thief hasn't moved an inch. Do... Do you think he's... Um... Hello? Are you okay, mister? He... He's dead. Paimon doesn't feel so good. Uh, let's get out of here. And fast! We should report back to Ganyu and Lan. on the secrets of the abyss. You have come here. You have seen our secrets. For this, you must pay the price. As a herald, I will mete out your punishment. An abyss herald? Dane. Dane's lift. Oh, I thought you were just a couple of pests that stumbled in here by mistake. So, you are with Dainsliff, that constant annoyance in our affairs. Did he send you here to die? His resistance against the Abyss has gone nowhere for a long time. There is nothing you can do to change the tide. The Abyss is unstoppable! Why is it hell? Why is it hell? here no longer. So, we meet again. A little sooner than I had expected. Hey, it's Dane! Judging by your expression, it seems you just experienced something quite strange. Could it be that you encountered an Abyss Herald in those ruins? Huh? How did you know that? I've been on the Abyss Herald's trail. I didn't expect to find you here as well. An inverted statue of the Seven, holding abyssal power in its hands. No, I have never seen such a thing during my time fighting the Abyss. Though I have had my suspicions. Tell me the rest of what happened in there. So you escaped the ruin depths filled with abyssal power, and then? And then, as we got close to the exit, an Abyss Herald suddenly appeared and blocked our way! We fought a big battle with that thing. Maybe it hasn't gotten too far yet. Yes, this is a rare opportunity indeed. Come, let's catch up to it. Let's go! A rare opportunity? With Dane helping out, maybe we'll be able to solve more mysteries about the Abyss. Those Abyss mages just now, were they trying to ambush us? No, 
They were just digging through these abandoned ruin guards looking for something of value. Oh, is that so? The Traveler here seems to like doing that a lot, too. Looking for chaos devices, chaos circuits, you know, that kind of stuff. Hmm. They wouldn't be searching for such ordinary objects. In fact, I was nearby investigating precisely because Abyss Mages often come out from that ruin to explore. They seem to be searching the remains of Ruin Guards for a certain valuable object to take back to the ruins. However, they look disappointed, so it would seem they haven't found it yet. Well then, why didn't you grab one of them just now and ask what they were up to? I certainly don't mean to be merciful towards these monsters of the Abyss, but I have a feeling that their plan with this object is of major importance to the entire Abyss Order. One cannot discover the truth behind it through interrogation. Or rather, these Abyss Mages likely fear something else, much more than they do a painful interrogation. Uh, Paimon is getting goosebumps thinking about all this. Alright, we shouldn't waste too much time here. Let's continue our search. of ruin guards roaming around too is that just a coincidence or there are no coincidences in the world everything is the fruit of seeds planted long ago just like your appearance in that tavern time is just waiting for those seeds to sprout forget it just some needless musings the connection between the Abyss Order and the Ruin Guards is by no means incidental. Rather, they are both branches that have grown out and up from the same roots below. Branches? Roots? What do you mean exactly? Both originate from an ancient nation that was destroyed 500 years ago. Kanria. Huh? Kanria? Really? The Abyss Order and Ruin Guards are left over from after the destruction of that nation? Oh, speaking of Conria, that's really a super ancient name! Oh, right. As your guide, Paimon should explain a bit here. A long time ago, the nation of Conria was... Huh? You have memories of being there. But that nation was destroyed 500 years ago! Hmm... Is that so? Well, everyone has their secrets. You did not pry into mine, so I shall not pry into yours. But, if you would like to tell me, I will listen. So, the Kanria you saw, what was it like? So that's the complete story, huh? Paimon thought that you ran into that unknown god first. I see. So your first memory after coming to this world was being awoken by your brother from within that meteorite. It seems your brother woke up first. But the question is, how long before you? And then your brother told you that the destruction of Kanria plunged the whole world into chaos. And that you two should leave this world called Tevat? The destruction of Conria? He said that? That destruction you witnessed, that's... 
history from 500 years ago. It seems the first time you awoke in this world was indeed during that period. Huh. So your brother must have understood this world better than you did, because he woke up first. And it was shortly after that that you encountered an unknown god who blocked your path, so you couldn't escape. Oh, Paimon knows this part really well. I understand. When you awoke at that time and hurriedly tried to leave for another world, you didn't know anything about Kanria. But now, since you have come to gain some understanding of Tevat, you are able to guess that the war you witnessed all those years ago must be the war that ended Kanria. Am I right? Ah, if that's the case, you must have been flipping through all sorts of books during our adventure these past few months. Before going to Mondstadt, you had just looked at some vague materials. Later, we managed to gather a whole bunch of old books from all around Mondstadt and Liyue, but you told Paimon they were useless. So, the whole time you were just trying to learn more about Conria so you could find your brother? Oh, yeah. You can travel around the Seven Nations to find the Seven. But where can you go to find a nation that was destroyed 500 years ago? I probably know more about Kanria than both of you. Kanria was a nation without a god. Not because it had a god that died or abandoned them, but because it never had a god to begin with. It was a powerful nation, built purely by humans. An unprecedented flourishing and glorious civilization. It was the pride of humankind. A nation without a god? Later events unfolded just as you remember. It was all destroyed by gods. You mean that... Five hundred years ago, the gods descended upon the world and brought desolation to Kanya. The pride of humankind was uprooted and crushed, like a weed removed from the garden of the gods. How could that be? The history books don't say anything about that. Yes, well... Continuing to discuss the past now will only dampen our spirits. Let's keep moving. I will tell you more of what you want to know as we continue our search. Over there! It's more ruin guards and abyss mages. Dane was just saying how these ancient machines are from Conria. Hmm. So... Did Conria have a lot of ruins that needed to be guarded? No. Ruin Guard is the name modern people have given these machines. No one called them that 500 years ago. These Ruin Guards were known as Field Tillers by the people of Conria. Field Tillers? What a strange name. It's not like you think. Field Tiller was just a code name. The people of Conria like to give code names to their weapons. The land is not to be tilled with farming tools, but rather is to be fought for with steel and blood. This is how the field tiller came about. Fought for with steel and blood? Well, that's an interesting way of understanding tilling. Uh, Paimon doesn't think it's a very positive interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> After the destruction of Kanria, these masterless field tillers went completely out of control. They wandered aimlessly over the centuries, gradually spreading to every corner of Tevat, perhaps resonating with the sorrow of other civilizations lost to time. They found their way to various ruins across the land, where they lie dormant. That sounds... so sad. Once you understand more, those details won't mean much to you. But no matter their past, all that remains of them now is the danger they pose. So destroy them all. Communication of some kind? 
Hmm. This talisman seems connected to the Abyss Herald. But why would an Abyss Mage be carrying it? Perhaps it really does contain information about their operation. But Paimon can't read the writing on it. Oh, is that the script of Conria? Engulf the faith of the enemy in flame, and bring glory to His Highness the Prince. What? Is that what it says? Loom of Fate, initial operation. They, the Abyss, seem to be carrying out a large operation. The key word here is Loom of Fate. It seems like they are still launching the operation, or rather, are still conducting preliminary tests. Loom of Fate? What's that? Is it literally a... Fate? From the horrible feeling Paimon's been getting, those eerie ruins are super likely to be related to this fate-weaving operation. So, Dane, what message does this talisman contain? I'm reading it now. Hmm. An ambitious operation. But some parts are difficult to understand. How so? In short, the first phase of the plan is related to Osile, Overlord of the Vortex. The Overlord of the Vortex? You mean that god in the ocean? What do they want with Osile? Uh... I know of your past heroics regarding Dvalin. And I also know of the Abyss Order's role in the Storm Terror incident. Though you may not have been aware of it at the time, you were thwarting an Abyss Order operation similar to this one. Last time it was Venti's old friend. This time it's a huge ancient god. The Abyss Order keeps setting their sights higher and higher! Will the Abyss Order use their lies and dark magic to corrupt Osile, just as they did Dvalin? No. From the contents of the Talisman, this operation goes one step further. They won't just corrupt Osile's mind. They also plan to use the ancient technology behind the Field Tillers to completely transform Osile's body. Is... that even possible? So wait, the Abyss Order wants to make some sort of cybernetic squid god of mass destruction? Very few people today truly understand the civilization of Kanria. Though of course, the accuracy of that understanding itself is difficult to judge. Only the Abyss Order has consistently sought out the remnants of Kanria. Despite being far from human, they seek out this lost human civilization quite persistently. The talisman's message states that they will use the defiled statue as a base, attaching Osile's limbs to construct a mechanized god, and the new core that shall replace the orb usually held by the statue of the Seven is the eye of the very first field tiller. The eye of the very first field tiller? Oh, Paimon gets it! All those Abyss Mages are looking for the special eye, right? It would seem so. This whole thing keeps getting more complicated. But basically, it all has to do with that eerie statue of the Seven we saw, right? Yes. According to the Talisman, the eye should be placed in the hands of the defiled statue thereby imbuing the newly born god with the power to topple the divine thrones of Celestia. Oh boy, the Abyss Order sure isn't holding back with this plan. Hmm. Since no one knows where the first field tiller is, how about we take the information about the statue as the starting point for our investigation? Yeah, that tone-deaf bard is too difficult to track down anyway. Let's go to the cathedral first and ask around. Maybe the cathedral. Huh? What's th nothing? Let's get moving. A huge statue, a grandiose cathedral. The people of Mondstadt clearly spent a great deal of resources and energy to construct them. But how aware of this was the animal Archon on receiving this gift? And how much did he give back in return? Return, though, does it? 
As long as the gods have a clear conscience about it all, there's nothing I can say about it. Shh! We're about to enter the cathedral! Don't say anything bad about the Animal Archon! And actually, the Animal Archon is... Ugh, never mind! <laughs> I never specifically said I would enter the cathedral. I'll leave you two to mingle with the sisters. Huh? You are the honorary knight of Mondstadt. They will surely allow you to poke into these affairs with their utmost trust. Having me tag along would only make them suspicious. Correct. And just as our little friend said, I might say something bad about the church at any time. When a non-believer steps onto holy ground, the result is never pretty. I have never received the favor of the gods in the past. I don't see any reason I would need it now, or in the future either. That's enough about that. While we've been chit-chatting, the Abyss Order continues to act. Okay then, we'll just go in ourselves and ask around. I should warn you about one thing. Don't go mentioning the defiled statue inside the cathedral. The Church of Favonius wouldn't ignore the matter of the statue. But if they rashly tried anything against the Abyss Order, it would only ruin whatever element of surprise we may have. Also, meddling in the affairs of the Abyss usually doesn't end well for anyone. Honorary Knight! Hi, how have you been? Do you need anything today? But I should first make it clear that if you need to borrow the Holy Lyre de Hermel again, we cannot oblige. It seems she hasn't realized it's just an illusion. Oh, we're here to ask some questions about something. Barbara, have you heard about the first field tiller? Hmm. What's that? Field tiller? What does it do? Uh, of course you wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> okay, next question. Has the church ever lost the Statue of the Seven? Huh? You're here to ask about that old story? Well, I didn't expect that. That was such a long time ago, barely anyone mentions it nowadays. A long time ago, there was indeed one Statue of the Seven that disappeared one night without a trace. Nearly every member of the church joined the search for it, but it was never found. In the church's records, as you might assume, this incident has been called the Lost Statue of the Seven. Hmm, of course! Of course? Uh, nothing? So do you have any other clues? Uh, uh, Paimon means any other strange stories? <laughs> Sorry, Barbara, but we can't tell you about the statue we saw just yet. Like Dane said outside, it's for your own good. Other strange stories? I'm not sure. Let me think about what other unusual incidents are in the church's records. Uh, oh, the tyrant's final fury? No, that's from another time. Probably unrelated. The tyrant's final fury? Oh... This refers to a time of great danger that engulfed old Mondstadt, the place now known as Storm Terror's Lair. Many, many years ago, there was a time when balls of fire would rain from the sky whenever anyone approached old Mondstadt. Balls of fire raining from the sky? How terrifying! People at that time believed it was a curse laid down by the god of storms, so they referred to it as the tyrant's final fury. This strange phenomenon continued for about a year. No one was ever able to solve it. It just gradually ceased on its own. Right! Later, the theory of the tyrant's final fury became less probable in the eyes of the church. Common reasoning dictates that the god of storms wouldn't shoot fireballs. Perhaps it was something else that caused the disaster. Anyway, this incident might not be related to the lost statue of the Seven, but I just can't think of any other strange incidents that might be. It's okay. Thanks anyway! There's that pointless word, thank you, again. I can never get used to hearing it. Oh, Rosaria, it's you. If you're looking for the Knights of Favonius, they're busy with those monsters again. 
Uh, those monsters? Those monsters that tried to attack Mondstadt last time during the Storm Terror incident? Wasn't that the Abyss Order? They're at it again? Indeed. They're gathering in Wolvendom, causing great unrest among the wolves. Could it be that the Abyss Order is targeting the spirit of Lupus Boreas? <sighs> As for what purpose, I can't say for certain. Master Jean has already headed off to Wolvendom. I must also begin to make a move myself. Then I will go as well. Master Jean said you should stay at the church and continue your work with the clergy. B but you're also a member of the clergy. Right! We'll go give Master Jean a hand! Oh, okay. If the honorary knight will be there, then... But please, everyone, be careful. May the animal archon protect you all. I see. Has the Abyss Order already launched a new operation? This could very well have something to do with the Defiled Statue. We should go as well. But what is the Abyss Order going to Wolvendom for anyway? Are they looking to do the same as they did with Devalin? Uh, not again! No, that's not likely. Unlike Osile, who was just suppressed, Andreas died long ago. Today, it is just his spirit that stands guard over Wolvendom. The Abyss Herald may just be targeting the spirit of Andreas in an attempt to garner some information from one of the Animo Archon's old companions. The closer we get to the target, the more enemies there are. <laughs> Fits the Abyss Order's style. Yeah, let's go! I'm... not going any further. Huh? Why not? Is it because you're afraid of fluffy animals? It has nothing to do with wolves. It's because Boreas was an ancient god, yet he willingly became a servant of the Seven. I cannot possibly agree with his actions. I don't desire any interaction with him. Besides, you're the one people like. I'm less likable. There's nothing special about gods anyway. It's just my opinion, but a word of advice. Always be on your guard when around gods. You shouldn't place too much trust in them. But at the same time, don't go too far in the opposite direction. Don't go tr- Even if the god in question is your sworn enemy. Don't trust them and don't hunt them. That's some awkward advice. <laughs> Lest I repeat the failing, I will tell you what- Huh? The destruction of the nation of Kanria by the gods is the reason the Abyss Order now seeks to destroy the nation's watch- Well, enough chit-chat. We should get back to business. I will go take care of the remaining Abyss Order members in the area. Try and keep your visit with Boreas brief. Afterward, let's meet at the entrance to Wolvendom. Up, oh, there he goes. What a strange man. Yeah, that's true. You also keep your guard up against unfamiliar gods. At the Rite of Dissension in Liyue, your decision was very similar to what Dane would do. Ah. <sighs> Not the easiest situation. Honorary Knight, Paimon, what are you two doing here? Oh, Master Jean! So glad we found you! Rosaria told us that you came here to fight the Abyss Order, so we came to help! Then your help is greatly appreciated. The Abyss Order's sudden offensive is very strange. They have surrounded Wolvendom. I am preparing to send out some knights to fight back. I just scouted out all of Wolvendom. But I did not see you. Rosaria told me that the Abyss Order is going after Boreas. But the Abyss Order and Boreas... What is the connection between them? They just like to cause trouble. Ah, do they really need a reason? The Abyss Order already went after Devalin. It's not too surprising that they would also go after another one of the Animal Archon's buddies. Hmm, that is true. 
Regardless, whether the reason behind the present threat is clear or not, I will handle the situation. Honorary Knight, please go and check if Lupus Boreas is in any danger. This god's spirit... He does not often see people, but I hear that you have met him before. Maybe it is best that you are also the one to meet him this time. Okay, be careful. Thank you for your help, Honorary Knight of Favonius. You! Not welcome here! <laughs> so, the wolf's wretched spirit likes to raise wild pups now. You claim to be a guardian, yet your once sharp claws have clearly dulled since your days of godly glory. If you serve us, we can restore your divine powers you once held in the past. What the heck is this ceremony? He looks like he's in a lot of pain. Oh no, is this the same thing they did to corrupt Avalon's mind? Wolves never surrender. But this can't go on. No matter how many times you resist us, your efforts are all in vain. Interrupted. How fortunate for you. How does an old spirit have such determined will? No matter. This is but a small unforeseen variable. Our grand scheme will not be affected. It disappeared again! Thank you. You came, just in- Human Lupacol. I am ashamed that you must see me in my present state. But still, the Abyss Herald underestimated my strength. Lupus Boreas never refuses trial, but scary outsider, not respect trial rules. I too didn't see. The track. Wait, so you mean the Abyss Order had everything prepared to corrupt Lupus Boreas's mind, then lured him out under the pretense of challenging him in a trial? Thank you. In the future, my claws must get sharper. You smelled danger and came here? No, we heard about the danger. Paimon's nose doesn't even know what danger smells like. Besides coming to help, we actually have something to ask you about, too. Ah, uh, excuse us, Mr. Wolf God. Do you know anything about the first field tiller? I pay no heed to the contraptions of humans. I know not what this field tiller is. Though there was indeed one human-made machine that I can never forget. It entered into my proving ground by accident, and I mistook it for a challenger. But it could not think, only fight. It was designed as a pure killing machine from top to bottom. I eventually damaged it greatly with one of my attacks. Before it fell to the ground, it fled the proving ground. Hmm. By the sounds of it, it's possible that could have been the very first field tiller, right? Yes. 
It could spin, leap high into the air, and even shoot fireballs. Although no match for a god, it was stronger than even many who wield visions. Fireballs? Hey, didn't we hear this somewhere else recently as well? Anyway, this pretty much proves that the first field tiller came to Mondstadt, doesn't it? It sounds like the first one was way stronger than the mass-produced ruin guards that came after. But in this story, it was damaged at the Proving Ground while fighting the Wolf of the North. Don't know, but did we help? Yes, you were a big help. Thanks. We need to keep investigating something super important. The Abyss Herald may have left, but the Abyss's forces are still attacking. You two be careful. Yes, I smell more danger. Bigger danger. You two also be careful. Dang, there you are! Did you see Master Jean? I saw her, but purposely avoided her. As both the Lion Fang Knight and acting Grand Master, she naturally would have some reservations towards me. If I'm not careful, one day I may find myself becoming the object of one of her investigations. But back to the matter at hand. I defeated some of the Abyss forces, but wasn't able to gather any information. Did you have more success? I see. Well then, we can more or less figure out where the first field tiller ended up. Huh? Really? Just from the Lupus Boreas story? That information combined with a more comprehensive analysis. For example, the old story you told me you heard in the cathedral. Exactly. The strange story told to you by that young sister, long mistaken to be a curse rained down by a deceased tyrant. Damaged in the fight with the Wolf of the North, it must have wandered into the ruins of Old Monsta and stayed there. Then, whenever anyone got close, pew, pew, boom, it would fire a ton of missiles at them. Until one day, it finally broke down for good, and the fireballs stopped raining from the sky. Back then, the people of Monsta hadn't seen many ruin guards before. So they came to interpret it as the Tyrant's Final Fury! It looks like we need to make a trip to Storm Terror's lair and comb the entire area. Hmm, what do you mean? Huh? Yep. Oh, Paimon remembers too! We saw that abandoned ruin guard sitting atop the tower when we went there before. Can't forget something like that. This is it, right? <sighs> okay then, use your elemental sight to look for the eye. Ooh, so what did you see? Huh? Nothing? Oh, but Paimon was so excited! Uh, what's going on? Are you sure you did it right? This requires another method. Using elemental sight on a field tiller is of no use because it is not powered by the elements. Let me give it a try. And done. Wow! It's... it's a... The very thing the Abyss Herald has been seeking all along. The eye of the first field tiller. All of the ruin guards today are just replicas of this machine. As the prototype, its combat capability was unrestricted. Prototype? Oh, Paimon doesn't know that word. Is it another ancient term from Conria? As the Abyss Order has surmised, if this eye is placed in the hands of the defiled statue, and if the limbs of Osile, overlord of the Vortex, are attached to the statue, there you have a mechanized god. 
And this newly born god will have the power to topple the divine thrones of Celestia. Yes. Then... what should we do with this eye? No. I'll guard it myself. Huh? You? Dane? Hmm... You won't go and do anything crazy with it, will you? You may doubt me if you wish, but I must ensure it does not fall into the wrong hands. No matter where we may hide it, they will find it. And as for the Church of Favonius, well, you know I don't trust them. Oh! <laughs> but our work isn't done yet. To avoid any further repercussions, we must also take care of that defiled statue. We can't have the Church get involved. Let's handle it ourselves. As for what I mean by take care of it, naturally I mean to completely destroy it. D destroy it? That's a statue of the Seven! As well as being a really important cultural relic, they're actually divine too! Oh, well, good thing we didn't tell Barbara earlier. Otherwise she'd be going completely bonkers right now. <laughs> Do the Seven really expect me to help them look after what belongs to them? Let's go back to those ruins and destroy the inverted statue. If we are lucky, we will also run into that Abyss Herald. I'll make sure it doesn't get away this time. So after all that running around, we end up right back here again. Look at us. We barely escaped this place last time, and we're strolling right back in. Gee, surely we must be some of the perfect adventures and all of that. That is the stupidest. To get to that creepy statue, we just need to follow the path we used to escape last time. That should take us right to it. Yep, that'll work. Let's go. And remember, be on your guard. Looks like we're here. An eerie, lifeless, dark chamber. I understand the evil aura you were describing earlier. Oh, such a scary place. Be careful to not be overwhelmed by the power of the defiled statue. The Abyss Herald. It's here. <laughs> you are just as vexatious as ever, Dane Smith, enemy of the Abyss. I sense your soul is stained by terrible bloodshed, perhaps from your darkest nightmares, unless... <laughs> oh, and something far more dangerous. You reek of a corruption familiar to me. Then we are the same. We're both dangerous. But dangers from outside of the Abyss Order must be caught and caged. It is your words that forever reek of corruption. Time to silence you!
Lumina. Uh, wait! He just blocked an attack against the Abyss Herald! Your brother? And the Abyss? Lumina, why are you with Dane? Uh-huh. Your brother knows Dane? <laughs> Ether. We meet again. Uh, what's going on here? Dane knows him too? You shouldn't team up with this man. He is my enemy. Ether. <laughs> but it must be said. Don't try to stop me. Don't try to stop the Abyss. That man Dainsliff was the Twilight Sword. One of the royal guards of the final dynasty of Conria. 500 years ago, he failed to prevent the destruction of Conria. A curse of immortality was laid upon him, to forever wander the wilderness, while he watched the people he was supposed to protect turn into the monsters of the Abyss. You're saying Dane is from Conria? The same Conria that was destroyed 500 years ago? And you said the people turned into monsters? You're trying to tell Paimon that the Abyss Order is not only related to Conria, but is actually the people of Conria themselves? Uh, and the whole thing about Dane being your enemy... Uh... Home. Yes, of course. Home is wherever we are together. But I cannot go with you to the next world to find a new home. At least, not yet. Until the Abyss has engulfed the thrones, my war with destiny will see no end. Listen to me, Lumine. I have already traveled through this world once. Once you reach the end of your journey as I did, you will see for yourself the true nature of this world. So we'll meet again. Though we need not rush, sister. I have more than enough time to wait for you. We have always had enough time. to him. Still, we don't know for sure if he's the highest ranking leader in the organization. Also, your brother said that he wants to engulf the thrones and go to war with destiny. What the heck does that mean? Could it be he wants to destroy the Seven and the Seven Nations? Next thing, turns out the Abyss Order monsters are really what the people of Conria turned into after their nation was destroyed. And Dane is from Conria, too! He witnessed its destruction 500 years ago! But he didn't turn into a monster. And now he's fighting the Abyss Order. So that's why your brother said that Dane is his enemy, right? But if the monsters of the Abyss are the same people that Dane protected all those years ago, then why is he enemies with the Abyss Order now? Also, how come after all this time we've spent searching for your brother, it turns out he's on the side of the Abyss? Well, yeah, you're right. Then 
We can't let ourselves get down about it now. Our journey's not over yet. Let's get a move on. Time to leave this terrible dark place and get back to the surface where the sun shines bright. If your brother wants you to reach the end of your journey, show him what you're made of. Come on, traveler. Let's go.